There we are, Willie. We are back. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. We made it. Somehow, the Mandalorian got us through, but we made it. We made it. The Mandalorian was our, our saving grace, and although we will not see Din Djarin again for years, we still have much to talk about, because over the break, released exclusively on Disney+, Plus on Christmas Day, Pixar's newest movie, Soul, came out. So we are welcoming everyone to our channel's third show, Lamplight. Um, it's going to be our Pixar show, and today we're talking Soul. And you, Will, you texted me before I even had a chance to watch it, and you were very positive. So, what are your, what was your initial reaction to Soul? Yeah. So, I mean, I think so. I, I, I've we haven't talked too much Pixar stuff, you know, on here yet. Um, no. And and one of the sh- one. One of the shows that will eventually see the light of day, um, we we do dig into it a bit more. Um, but I'm I'm very I'm I'm normally very hot or cold with Pixar. Um, so, and I mean even I think if you just look at the movies this year, we have Onward and then we have Soul, and so we you know very very hot and cold. Mm-hmm. Um, but. But so I like so I watched it. Um, you know, it's interesting. I watched it with my family remotely uh, on on Christmas. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we got to you know we got to use little um, emoticons on uh, on Disney Plus to tell each other how we were feeling. Oh, you did group watch. <laughs> yeah, we did. I have not watch. had a chance to use that yet. How how did you find that feature? Uh, it, so it wasn't as cool as I thought it was going to be because it okay. all it really does okay. is just sync the video up. Um, and like I said, lets you do like little, you know, like emo- like emotion emoticons and stuff. Like we, we had a separate chat going, like it doesn't have chat, it doesn't mm. have video or anything. So it's not, it, it wasn't as exciting as I thought it was going to be. Got it. Um, you basically are just like reacting to things with, yeah, uh, got it. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but no, I I'm very and I I thought I thought I was gonna be very in on soul, um, but I'm I'm very in on soul for none of the reasons that I thought going off of the trailers, um, okay. which yeah. So, but yeah, I'm very I I, I especially since I've been wa- you know I've been going through and watching um you know old stuff so I've gotten through a lot of the early Pixar stuff this year and and Soul uh I, I think in a lot of ways reminds me more of the early Pixar stuff than most of the stuff that I think they've done recently um, interesting so yeah I'm definitely definitely in on the Soul yeah so Soul when it was first announced first trailer I saw um I was in because it's directed by Pete Doctor. Um, so this is Pixar's 23rd movie, and this is Pete Doctor's fourth with Pixar. He previously did Monsters, Inc., uh, the first Monsters, Up, Inside Out, and Soul. Um, and if you're asking me what are the top tier of Pixar, like, I mean, out of those four that he did, you know, I would say I might even put three out of the four in the top ten. Um, inside okay. Inside Out is one of my favorite Pixar movies, and it's honestly one of my favorite movies of the past, like of the of the of twenty ten to twenty twenty of the past decade. Um, I had okay. such an emotional reaction to Inside Out, and such like a pot, like I think about Pic- or Inside Out constantly. So I was like, I was excited to see him take on another weighty concept. Um, and I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump here actually, because um, I, I had messaged you this question that I want. I'm just gonna start here actually, and it's 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 my thought process. Is it's almost like a second version of Pixar has like started to form, and I'm saying that in like I'm I guess we could call it like the Doctor Verse almost, um, in the sense of like Inside Out and Soul. So Inside Out and Soul are two movies that take really like hefty concepts um and explore them and package them in a way that i guess you know my question is like is soul really a movie for children like is this a movie for children to process what it means to be happy or to to live a life because with inside out i think it was 
it's a little bit easier for kids to understand because the five emotions are very like cartoon friendly and they're very animated and they are like a one-to-one representation. Like anger is the big red mad guy. Um, But they're still dealing with very like intense subjects. Like the whole crux of that movie, you know, hangs on the fact that it's okay to be sad sometimes. Like joy only comes through sadness. So I guess my question is, is this a kid like did you find that soul was a kids movie because i truly didn't i when i watched this i'm like this really isn't a movie for kids this is just an animated pixar movie and it's really for everyone yeah and so it's interesting you bring that up because um i've I've had this conversation since watching the movie because i'm very curious how kids would respond to it and i i don't currently have any um I, you know, I don't have a panel of children that I can that I can <laughs> you can pull. Um, yeah, that I can pull. So I'm I'm very very curious. I mean the the interesting thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna keep going back to um, you know really the you know the the first big three for Pixar. So you know Toy Story, Toy or Bugs Life, Toy Story two, mm-hmm. uh, all all of which I've watched again this year, um, and you know I. Th- think i think those movies are very much kid movies but they also have layers and themes for adults Mm -hmm. um i don't think i I don't think soul necessarily has that same uh like kitty coding i guess um, I mean, the 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 only thing really is that, like, I mean, there's some stuff with him, you know, being stuck in a cat that's played for humor and stuff like that. Right. Um, but I, I think that, like, you know, we we grew up, we watched Toy Story, we watched Toy Story 2, and, and we weren't wrestling with the what it means to be alive, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but now we watch it and, we, you know, we get what they're doing. Um, I don't think I don't think there's a a uh, not, not, it's not even a subliminal. I don't think there's like a face value reading of soul that's not very deep, right? And so I I, I don't know what 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 kids would get out of it watching it, not being able to process you know you know really what's going on. So I I don't know if it is a kids movie. I mean, the main character is a middle aged music teacher which is not something i think a lot of seven to ten year olds can relate to (laughs) and there really isn't even the cat stuff which is played for laughs and we we can get into the cat stuff in a bit because the cat thing is both narratively and executionally i think weird um yep but even the cat stuff there isn't really even a digression where the cat goes on like a silly cat adventure with like other Mm -hmm animal characters so it's not even like there's anything for the kids to like like what is the movies what is this movie like think about this this is the wrong way to think about like a movie but like what is the merchandise factor for this movie is it like the souls like the met like is that what kids are going to purchase uh is that like what they're going to want on t-shirts it's interesting that you bring that up so i i have seen um, from what I've seen from where to this movie, um, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like plushes of the souls, you know, in, in the same way, um, you know, we saw the, the emotions for inside out. Right. Um, I've seen a lot of, st- I've seen a lot of stuff that's just like jazzy New Yorky themed, um, mm. you know, stuff kind of too. So that, yeah. you know, there's some stuff there. Um, but yeah, there's no, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, it's, like I said, I, I think that you can be a kid and enjoy Toy Story and a lot of Pixar's movies just as much as an adult will, and then you'll get more out of the, you know, you'll get a different experience out of them later as an adult. Yes. I, I don't think Soul, I, I don't think Soul is like that. I don't think, I don't think um, kids aren't going to. I would imagine, at least, that kids aren't going to latch on to the disappointment of being middle-aged. <laughs> no. Or, like, having your life not go where you expected it to go. Um, and I, I... The first thing I thought of when I was thinking about this is, like, you know, I mean, we're really describing, like, the care... The, when Joe, um, he 
bait it's i can't i think it's kind of ambiguous of whether he dies or not like i think he is he's on the escalator to the great beyond and later he will show up and he will his body will appear in a coma in a hospital bed so it's almost like nebulous to whether he actually died or not that was my reading at least um i think yeah i think that's fair i i don't i don't i will I wouldn't have said he was dead. He was passing over. Yeah. And breaks the rules somehow. <laughs> yes. And, and almost there. So I think there's a little bit of stickiness, especially with kids there of thinking that like, uh, if you die, can you come back? But what I wanted to talk about here in relation to Pixar is that um, it wasn't so long ago, just a couple of years ago that they really, that Pixar released Coco which is another film that deals heavily with the afterlife and um, and kind of seeing that represented. Now, we never actually go to the great beyond in Seoul. We only get uh, the escalator up to the great beyond, and we get the great before. So we never actually go to the afterlife. So no one technically dies, um, which is, I think, the difference. But I guess my point here is that when Coco presented it, it still seemed like more of a, a movie for children to like help them process grief and death and their loved ones and the relationship with family and legacy and all that. And there was, you know, the big colorful dog. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm horribly um, describing what uh, the animal is or the name of the animal is, but like there, it just seemed like it was more hopeful and uh more accessible for kids to understand what was going on the care the skeletons were funny and not scary and all that and it was just you know coco struck me as just kind of like a kid's journey through a fun underworld to like reconnect with his his past whereas soul is really i mean it's navigating how we deal with like how we process like our lives in general so i guess my question to you is and I feel like I took a different reading out of the entire movie. I guess my question to you is then, what do you take away from this movie? Like, what would you try to, if you could distill it down to, you know, a few phrases, what was the moral of soul to you? Yeah. So I think, and I, I think I've, I've sharpened this with some of the stuff I've read and with, with seeing other people digest it and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I, mean, I, I think, I, I think what soul is really going for is this idea that, what you love to do might not be what you're going to spend your whole life doing. Okay. And so, and, and, and I think, I think that really kind of comes, comes clear at the end. And so one, one of the interesting quotes the director said is he wanted to make this movie because after doing his first two, so after doing up in monsters, Inc, he was just kind of like, well, how am I supposed to feel now? Like my right. whole life I wanted to make, and now I made movies and like well what like I, you know I still feel kind of incomplete so I think that whole the to distill it down I think it is you know it's your passion isn't necessarily your purpose and I think I think that plays really well with the music idea and it's interesting because you know I, I think if you if you look at the the speech he has um, with with the professional musician whose name I'm forgetting um, at the end when he's like, Oh, like that was so awesome. Like that show was great. Like, what do we, what do I do now? Yeah. She's just like, well, we, we do the same thing tomorrow. Right. And, and he was just kind of like, Oh, and like, I think, you know, I think it's for her music was a, was a job. It was her career. And, and I think it's showing that like, you can, you can, I mean, there's no doubt that he loved music. But that doesn't mean that's what um, that doesn't mean that's what he's going to do for his day job, right? You know, it, and it, or it doesn't. You know, you can. You know, it, that doesn't mean that music necessarily is going to fulfill him, right? Um, so it's it's yeah, it's it's interesting. It's interesting in a lot of ways. And I mean, as you know, as someone who, um, you know. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, switched from the the pure art of journalism into, you know, the 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 dastardly side of marketing. Um, you know, it it isn't it isn't. You know, I, I think it's an interesting thing because at some point, um, you know, I I do think you have to re you, know, you have to sit down with yourself and be like, hey, 
do I keep pursuing this? Do I do something else? Do you know, can I find a way to make money and make a living doing something that I'm good at, but might right. not necessarily be like my calling. And so I, I think it, I think it all, you know, plays into that idea. Um, and, and, you know, one, one of the things I've been, I've been thinking a lot throughout, you know, 2021 is, or th- no last year throughout 2020, you know, is, is, is kind of this concept, this idea that, you know, not everyone gets their dream, right? you know, and, yeah. and I think that, I think that in movies, you know, we follow most of the time we follow Luke Skywalker who saves the day. But yeah. for every Luke Skywalker, there's billions of people who don't blow up the Death Star. Yes. And so, you know, I, I, I think this is I think Soul is tapping into that same idea of, you know, Joe's not he's just kind of a, a normal dude. Yeah. I and mean, we never you know, we see that he is really good at piano. But in context of the film, we don't know if he's any better or worse than anyone else, really. True. True. He just he just loves it. But yeah. just because he loves piano doesn't doesn't mean piano is going to pay the bills for him. <laughs> um, right. And it, it and it doesn't. I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go so or, far as to say. To say even if even if it can pay the bills, is that what he? after after he does it if he can do it is that what he wants like is that really the fulfillment in life yeah and so and that's that's the part where i think it gets that's the part where i think it gets really tricky for me because then it's like oh like shit so like well if what i like to do isn't going to fulfill me then what is right and i don't the movie doesn't have an answer for that it does not have an answer and that's and and here's the thing that so I would say when I was reading the moral, I, I came to the same conclusion that you did. Um, uh, your passion doesn't have to be your purpose. However, the ending left me very lukewarm um, because there's essentially the scene where the 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 Terrys, um, which are great abstract designs, um, decide to give Joe a second chance to go back to Earth. And they say, what are you going to do? And he's like, I don't know, but I'm just going to live. And to me, like, that seemed to be the movie saying, like, listen, the point of life is to live life, is to have experiences, is to enjoy the time that you have, regardless of what you do. Um, Now, my thing with that is, is, like, it doesn't have an answer for if you get your dream and it's not what you wanted, what do you do? Or if you don't get your dream, like, how do you still have a meaningful life? It doesn't really have an answer for that other than to just live your life. Now here is, I was watching this with my wife and here we were just kind of talking it through because I, um, um, as a graduate of film, a film studies program, I cannot watch movies regularly. I need to break down the story structure in real time and just call things out when I see them. So here's where we decided where we thought the ending was going to go. We thought that he was going to get a second chance. We thought that he was going to turn down the gig um, to become a musician, which turned out to be true. And then we thought that because he mentored 22 when no one else could, and he is a teacher, that he was going to realize that his passion is actually teaching music and that he actually does love being a teacher and that we would jump a few years in the future and Mm -hmm. you would see he's very happy when a bright eyed youngster comes in to his music class and there'd be some level of recognition in the eyes or something that this was 22 come into his class and he would know it was her or, and he would just have that recognition and there'd be a smile on his face that she made it and she wouldn't know, but he would welcome in her into the music class. And that would be the end. That would be the out is that it's, it's very that, happy. That might've been a better ending than what we got. <laughs> hey, my, I will give the credit to my wife for being like, oh man, is 22 going to be a student now? Um, I really like that ending. And I feel like it doesn't take away from the point of the movie being to just live your life. Um, but I think maybe the problem that they would have with that is it ties it down to the fact that, okay, well, he finds happiness in being a teacher. And I really don't think the movie is trying to say that. I think the movie is trying to say that it doesn't, it literally doesn't matter if it's your dream, if it's not your dream. If it's something you don't even like, as long as you just enjoy, if you try to enjoy 
life itself. If you try to enjoy the experiences that you can have, like enjoy pizza, enjoy walking around, like taking a walk. Um, I don't know what 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 do you feel about that? Like, do you think that the movie is better served with that more ambiguous ending? Like, did you how did you find the ending? Did you find it satisfying, or were you like okay? Um, I mean. I like your ending better than what we actually got. <laughs> um, no, I mean, and I think, because I remember, now that you say that, I remember thinking that he was going to kind of figure out, you know, that, that it was going to, it really seemed that it was going to lead to him being teaching. And so what I thought was going to happen, I didn't think he was going to go back. I thought he was going to stay dead and become like the great, one of the great teachers in the great yes. And, you know, and he was going to help train people there. I think that would have worked, too. I do, um, too. I mean, I I think that... I think that they may have been afraid to... I, I think they were, they were probably afraid that making him a music teacher at the end was undercutting their point that it doesn't matter what you do. Right. Well, I, I agree with you. I, I don't think that does. And... In in general, I'm I'm not a fan of of you know ambiguous endings of movies not having answers. This is what drives me crazy about uh, Inception. Sorry, Brian, um, but I just I don't the the idea of oh, I'm just going to come up with a whole bunch of questions but not have answers typically is not that interesting to me. Yeah. Um, because I, I feel like that's just it's just making you know it nothing ends up mattering. Right. But that's that's also kind of the point of soul, though, is that like, yes, like there's there's almost a very nihilist reading of soul uh, that nothing matters. Right. It's almost like the point of like life won't give you neat, tidy answers to things. And I feel like maybe that's what they were trying to lean into is like if we make Joe a teacher or if we make Joe the greatest mentor in the great before and he just accepts that his light like this is this is his true calling. Um, cause I think back to that one, uh, comment that another Terry said where he says, oh, you humans are your purpose. Like that doesn't matter. I, I think you're right. And that it really is a nihilistic, like, Hey, listen, it honestly doesn't matter. The point is like their life doesn't have these answers for you and it won't not like you could end up dying and not knowing what your purpose or your spark actually was. So the point is just to enjoy life while you can't enjoy the time that you had it's kind of like a depressing take but i i do think it's an important one to give to again whoever the audience is because it, it feels like it's not kids like how do you explain this to kids like how do you explain at all what is happening yeah i kids? don't i mean yeah, I don't. I, I like I said, I'm very curious the 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 kid critical reception to the yeah. to this film. Um, but I do, you know, and it's interesting you brought up Coco because I do, I do really really like Coco, mm -hmm. um, and and with the except like with the exception of Coco, I can't decide if I like Coco or Soul better. Um, but if if we remove Coco from the equation, I think Soul is one of the best things Pixar has done in in a really long time. Yeah. Um, and the the interesting thing um, with with both of if you look at both of them is, you know, uh, Coco, you know, we is from is from Miguel's point of view. It's yes. it's a it's a child's point of view. Yeah. And yeah, you're right here we it's a middle aged main character. Right. Uh, you know, and so I, I think I think that that kind of points to you know this is you know I, I think he made the direct he made the movie for himself. Um, you know, I think he made it for people who planned their whole life to do one thing and then did it and then right. don't know what to do, which is a very, like, I hate to say it, but it's a very millennial, you know, it's, it's, it's a very nihilistic millennial point yeah. of view. Yes. Uh, and, 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 and I hadn't thought of this until now, but it's interesting because today, um, is actually Miyazaki's birthday. So uh, people have been mm. posting, posting a lot of stuff about Miyazaki yeah. and it's, it's interesting because I actually think in some ways that I hadn't really thought of until now, like uh, Miyazaki, some of his movies are very, very kid animation based, but then, I mean, he, but he, some of his other films, it's, it's almost like this, its own genre of like serious adult animation. Right. And, and I, I could see soul fitting in, fitting in that slot as well. 
Um, yeah. You know, where it's it's not it's not necessarily made for kids, and I mean, it's kind of exciting, really, that you know the largest animation studio in the world is able to make animation that isn't just geared towards kids anymore. Yes. Uh, and you know, and I don't, I don't think is, is to me, I do really think soul it, at its beating heart is a Pixar movie. I think mm -hmm. it fits in with what Pixar does very well. Um, but I don't know if, I don't know if Pixar 20 years ago could have made this film. Uh, I definitely don't think so. I think they needed to notch a couple of these under their belt. Yeah, And I mean, I don't, and I don't know either if they could have convinced Disney to let them make this film. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, now that they put out two-ish, you know, movies a year or whatever. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a very, like, we, we can talk about some of the things that I, you know, that didn't work. But I mean, I, yeah. I think, I think that, you know, in terms of, in terms of Pixar movies, I th it's been a long time since I think a Pixar movie has, has had an impact like this. So. I agree. I think Cars is really the only, since Inside Out. Or I'm sorry, not Cars. Um, since Inside Out, Coco is the only standout, and that's why my point about the Divergent Pixar series is like, if they're making two a year, and we have Inside Out, and we have Soul, like, is Disney just gonna give them carte blanche to basically make a experimental film? I mean, I'm calling this experimental, a, a big budget like A tier Pixar movie that like deals with these very weighty concepts. So I'm I'm here for that version of Pixar because, you know, we talked you know extensively on our other show about how the fact that after a while, so there have been 23 Pixar movies, 15 original movies, and seven sequels. Uh, I'm sorry, eight sequels, and those sequels really get long in the tooth, mm -hmm. and some of them are really tough to get through, and um, so I'm just gonna rattle off the the movies since Inside Out. We've had Good Dinosaur, Finding Dory, Cars 3, Coco, Incredibles 2, Toy Story 4, Onward, and Soul. Oof. It's worse than I thought. It's, like, not great. It's really not great. And, like I said, Coco is really the only shining light. And Coco's a phenomenal movie. Nice. Um, um, until Soul. So, it's... Yeah, it's an interesting path to chart where Pixar is going to go. And I... I It'd be fascinating to see if Pixar is releasing two a year or they're doing more. It, uh, we talked about this a little bit on the investors presentation meeting is maybe they'll take more of the sequel bait stuff. So like the Cars 4 and the Mater show and push it all to Disney Plus. Yep. And then they will leave the feature film for this like actual um, important storytelling yeah. um, and I, taking those risks. I will say um, Onward very much deserve to go straight to Disney Plus. Soul, Soul, I think, deserved to be released in the theater. I, I'm i with you on that. Onward feels... I like Onward. I think Onward is a fun movie. I think Onward is a Disney animation movie and not a Pixar movie. I'd agree with, yeah, I'd agree with that. And it's not, but it's, it's not even... And it's actually funny. when I remember like right after I watched it, I was talking to one of my friends, and he was like, oh, it was Disney animation. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 that was Pixar. And then we're, and it's like, oh, well, for a Pixar movie, it's not good. <laughs> but, and I'm like, and it, yeah. And Onward has some interest. It, Onward is an interesting story. Uh, it's it's like a, it's its own thing. But um, we're going to stick with Soul, and we're going to go through the categories. So um, okay. tell me your favorite thing about Soul. Favorite moment. Um, oh, my oh favorite individual moment oh man or just favorite thing whatever your favorite thing about soul is i think i think for me, i think for me yeah yeah i think for me my favorite thing really was you know really was this message that that i i don't think you you hear that often which is you know you're not like you're not always going to get everything you want and sometimes you have to adjust in life and and i think that's that's really rare because i think that you know, for so long. I mean, even in the Marvel movies, like, I mean, our, our, our stories are dominated by, you know, mythology and heroism. And, you know, we, we don't really, we don't watch, you know, many movies about the people, it's not even about the people who lose, but, you know, the people who don't, who don't win that, you know, who don't get to go visit Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory. <laughs> 
Um, and and I, I think that's what I think that's that's what soul is. And I, I think especially now, um, you know, and it, it's interesting that this movie came out in 2020. Um, it's interesting that, you know, it's it's Pixar hitting its middle age at the same time as, um, you know, as we are who started with Toy Story and have that's grown a wonderful up with point. Pixar. Yeah. You know, and have grown up with Pixar. Like, I, I think that's that's part of it, too. Um, I mean, you know, we've talked a lot about Disney, you know, really realizing the power of millennials and the 90s demographic. And, you know, this this movie, I don't think would have hit you and me the same if we'd seen it 10 years ago. And it yeah. probably won't hit us the same if we watch it again in 10 years. Right. Um, it's a it's a it's a very 2020s movie. Um, so that that's the 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 thematic, uh, you know, what it was going for, I think, is is my favorite thing. Well, that's a terrifically nuanced take. And I'm about to really lower the the uh, <laughs> the standard of this podcast by saying my favorite thing was the Knicks joke. <laughs> you couldn't tell by my hat, because as a long suffering Knicks fan, um, and if you're unfamiliar, the Knicks have not won a championship since the 70s, and they seem to be cosmically faded, and like in the mythologies of old, to just never be successful in any way, shape, or form, and just kind of always just fall down on their faces. So the Knicks joke um, was one of the funniest moments I've ever seen in any movie ever, and uh, I really yeah. loved that. I like... I like spicy Disney like that. Like yeah. that's a hot take. Like that's a hot take. An incredibly <laughs> hot take. And I, I can only assume that the writer or Pete doctor is a Knicks fan um, because it would only come, it would only occur to a Knicks fan or a, I guess a basketball fan to make that joke. Obviously the movie's set in New York, but just an incredible moment. And when the person they showed like the soul jumping in the air, and 22 says, I've been messing with this team for decades. I'm like, it's going to be the Knicks. <laughs> it's just, it was wonderful. Um, but yes, to your point, I think your point about Pixar reaching middle age is wonderful because you're, I mean, you're really right for um, whatever the night. Yeah. I mean, they're roughly around the same age we are. So they really are nearing that point and they have had a lot of, they've had a ton of success and they have had a few missteps and I think they've had to reinvent and, um, you know, re, you know, kind of change gears a couple of times on the path. So it is an interesting point that we find ourselves, um, with the Pixar tapestry of films. Uh, tell me a couple of things that you liked about the movie. Yeah. So one, and, uh, one, one of the things was I re you know, I really enjoyed was I, I feel like this is some of the most experimental animation we've seen from Pixar. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you look at some of the stuff at the beginning and I was like, I was like, dang, this is like Fantasia level weird. Yeah. And I like, and I am he like, I'm here for like weird Pixar. Yes. Um, and so that, that I thought was really, really cool. Um, the, you know, I, I mentioned before I was in on this movie before I knew what this movie was. Um, if you take a movie and it's about a jet, like a jazz musician, like I'm in, like you've got, you've got to make a really bad movie. Um, la la land for me to not, oh, wow. not, not be interested in it when it's about a jazz musician. Um, and, and so, you know, that, that theming and, and I, I mean, I will say like, I, I, it's still kind of a bait and switch with Pixar again. Like that's not really what the movie's about. No. Um, but you know, so I, I, I really like that element of it. Um, yeah, those are, those are a few of my, few of my favorite things. I, to your point about animation, I thought one of the things I really liked and possibly also my favorite thing about the movie, aside from the Knicks, is the lighting. The lighting in Pixar, in, in this movie specifically, is like the best I've ever seen in any Pixar movie. I mean, it was incredible. The scene where they go into the downstairs jazz club 
like just the light, the lighting on the faces, the lighting on uh, the walls and the textures. I mean, it was, in, it was like incredible. Like, I couldn't believe that they were able to pull off this level of animation, this level of detail and realism while still suspended in that animated feel. Like it didn't feel like it was trying to be reality. It was just a very authentic experience and visual style. And it was just, it was truly beautiful. It's one of the most, you know, beautifully rendered and, and designed and animated pieces I've seen in a really long time. Yeah, I, and, I, saw, I saw one tweet that was going around that was comparing um, the humans and soul to how they handled them in Toy Story, which yeah. was, Andy looked like crap. They never, they never showed um, the parents' faces because they didn't really know how to do them yet. Right. Um, so you know, it's it's really interesting to 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 see you know that that huge transition. Yeah. Um, I do to to play to play devil's advocate. I uh -huh. didn't I didn't love the design of the souls, the Terry's, and the the great before. Okay. Um, I felt compared to everything else, like, I mean, New York City looked fantastic. Phenomenal. But I, I don't know. It just wasn't as, it, it, it was just, it just wasn't as inventive as I thought they could have been with those concepts. Yeah, agreed. Um, they, they just, they just seemed kind of there. Like the Terry is like, I don't like, what, what is that? It's just, they're a scribble with a face and like. Yeah, so to, I actually, this was actually handled or discussed in um, the Disney Plus uh, series Inside Pixar. Oh, One okay. of the episodes was about a costume designer, and she worked on the Terrys. And what she thought, there's a line in the movie about how it's whatever, it's the simplest thing that, they, that a human brain could process of what they actually are. Um, and the way she thought about that was to do like abstract, like, um wire sculptures and like so she actually like sculpted with wire the terries and like that's what she gave to the animators to animate and that's what ended up in the film however just knowing the backstory i completely agree with you i think that the great before is very um sterile yeah, um, yeah. And just, it. it's, yeah it's just not exciting and i mean you look no. at so you know, I've 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 made it this long without confessing I don't like Inside Out, <laughs> but I know I know, I know. But I will say Inside Out, like the environments and the 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 balls and everything looked really cool. It, it was a really right. inventive concept for emotions, and I feel like we didn't get that here for you know, it, to parallel it, we didn't get that here for the great beyond or great before. No. Yeah. And especially, um, I thought the hall of, I, I, I forget what it's called. It might, I think it's the hall of everything of which they enter oh, in yeah. to find what your spark is. And I was watching that where everything is kind of whitewashed, like specifically, I, I guess, like there's really no color to it. Um, and I was, I remembered back to this sort of weird thing, but I remember back to Ralph Breaks the Internet, the Wreck-It Ralph sequel, in which they literally enter the internet. And in that, I'm like, this seems like what the inside of the internet would be like if it were a place. Like, there's just ads, and it's all colorful, and it's all these, like, popular characters. It's like, it's this feels very authentic to what the movie is trying to say, and it feels, you know, very fun. And, like, whereas when they went into a hall of everything, and everything is just whitewashed, and there's, like, a bakery stand next to, you know, a piano. And I'm like, um, I just feel like that they, they, they spent all of their money or time elsewhere. And it's not to say yeah, that the I, story I, suffered, but it was just a little uh, disappointing. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fair. And like I said, especially after some of the really early weird stuff that they do when he's transferring between dimensions and stuff like that is, is, is cool. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, I'd even say, you know, the um when the the lost souls like even that at least has some like they're slightly more interesting than everything else design wise the movie is doing yeah mm, slightly i'm i'm fading on that the more i think about fading it, on the lost souls <laughs> i like the lost souls and um i think it was i think it was a cool thing but um let's jump over here to what um 
what in the movie didn't you love? Um, what other things kind of left you a little disappointed or, or off or out on? Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, you know, I didn't like Inside Out. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a version of this film that doesn't have the weird body swapping, soul swapping, yeah. Pixar bait and switch yes. that work that works probably just as well. I can't say for sure if it works better, but I don't think we don't need him switching bodies with twenty two. We don't need half like we don't need. Oh, this movie is gonna be about a jazz pianist, and then oh, it's actually about what is life. Um, right. And that, I think you know, I think ever since uh, Brave, Pixar's really you know, and we've talked about this before. Pixar's really gone for the like you watch the trailer and then it's nothing like the actual movie. Yes. And I think I think they did the same thing here. And like even as I was watching it, I was like, oh, I was like, this is so good. And I was like, but why did you have to do a bait and switch again? Right. Like just make just make a movie that's about what like make the movie look like it's about what it's gonna be about. Yes. Uh, and and so that like there there was definitely, you know, as it was doing that, there was, you know, there was time where I was like, I don't know if this movie is gonna pull it off. Right. Um and but it did it you know i i really enjoyed it i think despite me not liking that despite me not wanting another movie that's about the weird bodification of emotions and souls and spirits and heads and feelings mm -hmm. um it it, it despite mm -hmm. all of that i still think it really succeeded um but oh i would not i really hope that this like i don't want another I don't want him to do another movie and we, we're all of a sudden in the, these series of movies that are all connected by the personification of emotions. Like, I don't want that at all. <laughs> yeah. um, we're going to have to circle back to Inside Out at some point, but I'm going to leave it. <laughs> I'm not going to address it right now because <laughs> I love Inside Out. Um, so yeah, the thing I didn't like about the movie was also the body swap thing. And so for a couple of reasons. First off, and this is just my, like narratively, I don't understand the point. I don't yeah. understand why we needed to, I understand that Joe needed to not be Joe yet. He needed to experience life outside of himself. However, he just jumps into a cat. And I have a feeling that if you replace that, like, with there was an ant on the bed, there was a mouse on the bed, there was a dog next to the, there was a therapy dog instead of a therapy cat. Like, does it change that at all? And I don't think it does. And perhaps I'm I'm not reading deep enough into Pete Doctor's vision. But if it doesn't, then I then I have to question the narrative intention of why there's a cat in the first place, unless the goal is just to get Joe outside of his body. Um, and then that being said, obviously, um, there has been a lot of criticism and I, I do think we should mention it, um, to the fact that it, it seems, uh, you know, kind of iffy to say the least to have Tina Fey, um, is the voice of 22 to jump into Joe's body. And again, it just seems like, and not that 22 is, um, like has an assigned race or anything like that. But you, Tina Fey is a pretty recognizable voice. And I guess my question for Pixar is like, was there no other actor we could have gotten to play that role? Um, it's just like the whole body swapping thing, it just narratively and executionally seemed, I don't want to say forced, because again, it seemed to serve some kind of purpose, but I just don't, I, I, I question the intentions there. Yeah, and I mean, and I I do think it's a big deal, um, you know, especially with the bait and switch when they, I mean, I think they they really played up the authenticity of this movie and that it was gonna, you know, it was gonna be a very black story. And I mean, that's not what we got. It's and not, so yeah. I can I can and I can absolutely understand those criticisms of like you know you. You tried to sell us one thing, and then we just we're gonna have Tina Fey voice and act out and go inside this you know this black person's body for the whole thing. Like that's that's what we're gonna do. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's a very very valid complaint. Um, I think even even like 
I, I regardless of how you look at it, if if either way, if you remove the race out of it, I still think the body swapping is a problem. Yes, absolutely. Um, but I, I think, think it, yeah, because well, I just don't I understand think, it. <laughs> just no, I don't either. And it's and I think, but I think the race issue in itself is an issue, and and I, it's just it's like it's one of those things where it's like I feel like someone at some point should have thought about that. Yeah, and again, I'm you know neither of us are black, so we have no idea what it it no is yeah. to experience this movie, um, you know, through those eyes and through that lens. And, and perhaps, um, you know, there are, I, like, I'm sure there are some that have, there are some people that have no problem with that whatsoever. They don't even give it a second thought um, when watching it. But um, again, taking the race out of it, it's just the body swapping thing. It just seems like a Pixar staple. Like it's a card they have in their deck and they're like, you know what we need to do to tell, to teach this lesson, body swap. And they just like slam it on the table and like, great act two is solved. We have our, we have our fun humor and we have something for the kids to drive them to the end. And it just, it just didn't land for me. No, I, I agree. I, I completely agree. And, and yeah, I mean, it, it, like, there's just, there's just so many levels of, like, of why they even bother to do that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I mean, and it's, you know, like, I know, like, they did a lot of work, um, you know, like, uh, they were doing, a, they did a lot of promo talking about, like, the barbershop scene, you know, mm -hmm. how they really wanted that to be, you know, authentic to black culture. Um, and, and I mean, I, I don't know what, what diversity at Pixar looks like, but yeah, like I said, I imagine at some point someone would have been like, are you, are you sure we should take our first major black main character and then replace him with Tina Fey halfway through? Like, is, is that, is that really what we're trying to say? Right. <laughs> um, and that's, yeah. Um, also for the record, I, I thought it was really funny that it did end up being Tina Fey because after I didn't know that after when I watched the movie okay. and after, afterwards I made some joke and I was like, well, at least they didn't just replace Tina Fey. And, and it, it turns out they did. Turns out so. it, in fact, it was Tina Fey. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I want to get to the last thing and I'm going to start if you don't mind, because it was something that like really got me. So Pixar is always it, i think there's always one moment in each pixar moment that is like that emotional gut punch so in toy story 2 it's the jesse scene um in um god in in up it's the opening scene and in this uh, in soul to me it was the moment where joe um realizes that he needs to rescue 22 and he gets, he goes, he plays piano in his home and out of the show and he enters the zone and then he finds 22 has become a lost soul and he enters the kind of, uh, the sandstorm as it were, that is the lost soul in which it is just a bunch of people saying like the worst thing, like your worst thoughts and fears, like things that like we tell ourselves every day, just as like middle-aged adults, like, yeah, you're not good enough. You're not, um, no one likes you. You're never going to be successful. Like you can't make it. You're not strong enough. And you're seeing all of these, all of the previous mentors of 22. Uh, and then finally you see Joe um, tell her or tell 22 and 22 is gendered at all, but tell 22 that, uh, you know, kind of reiterate the same thing. And it's just, it's this heartbreaking moment. And I was just so shocked. Um, so this was my surprise moment when he enters into the lost soul and we, we are confronted with those thoughts. Um, I was so shocked that Pixar just went completely for the jugular. And I, yeah. I, it really got me. It really made me emotional. Like that moment of like, Oh my God, like they're really tapping into something that I think is a universal feeling. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I think that's one of the, um, I think that's one of the better depictions of, of mental illness that I've seen in film. Um, I, I, I thought that, I thought that was a really poignant um, example. Um, I, I think that, biggest shock for me was probably was probably actually him dying uh, or him him fall him falling down the hole at the beginning yeah uh, 
because and I think that and then I was just like, well, wait, what's going like what's going on now? Like I thought I thought I was just going to watch him play piano for two hours. Like this is uh, what what's Pixar serving me up here? Yeah. But yeah, they 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 did. That was a that was a good that was a good scene. I wish I didn't know that beforehand. Like I wish I didn't have like, oh my gosh, he's going to die and become a soul beforehand because i do think that moment would have been like wait is he dead um but yeah it was really well i think i think that was well executed um and yeah i just think that uh you know pixar really knows how to pick their spots as it were they know when to really turn that emotion dial all the way up and um and that, and that shock factor really is nice in both of those moments that that we talked about the the Joe dying um, or not dying again. I think your mileage may vary on whether or not he died or was just in a coma or whatever. Um, but, and then again, it, with the lost souls moment. So really, yeah, I mean, the, there's just so much to chew on here, but before we go, um, because I think you were, um, you know, you're super positive on soul, any final thoughts? And if you had to give it a quick ranking, um, you don't have to assign a number to it, but would you put it in the top ten of your favorite Pixar movies? Uh, yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I I think that it really the the thing that connects it to me, or the thing that for me connects it to the rest of Pixar. And again, I'm gonna go back to these you know the, these three I've gone back to a lot. Toy Story, the first one, I think is from is really on it if it's face value it's a movie about toys coming to life yeah you look at bugs life and i mean that whole movie is about rejecting the status quo channeling creativity you know rejecting blind capitalism it, it i just watched that movie again this year and was like man i was not paying attention as a kid <laughs> um and so, and, and I think, you know, you get that too, where, I mean, Toy Story 2 is about, you know, you have to choose if you want to live your life or if you want to sit on a shelf and, and you know, and, and not risk anything. Um, so I think, if you know, looking at that vein, I, I, I think that soul really, really fits in there. Um, I, I do. I think it's, I think it's the best Pixar movie it's it's tight with Coco, but I think Coco to me is almost in in its own little land kind of. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I think if you take Coco out, it's it's easily the best uh, movie Pixar has done in in a very long time. Um, and yeah, this is this is like I love Coco, but Coco doesn't remind me of old Pixar. Yeah. Um, like I said, to to me, I don't I don't think Coco necessarily had to be a Pixar movie. Um, if that if that makes sense, it does. Um, where where soul soul to me, I think fits very much in that vein of you know of following in the Toy Story tradition and Bugs Life and you know and films like that. Where yeah, I I think it earns a spot in 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 in, in the higher echelons of uh, of Pixar stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I I think Soul is firmly in my top ten as well. Um, just it really we just gotta uh, convince you it's better than inside out that's i mean that inside out is just uh, inside out might be in my top five not my top three of of, mm. of pixar it really inside out really got me um but yeah, and Soul is firmly in the top 10. And I just think because I was really gripped from start to finish, like it really had me, um, you know, aside from any of the parts that I either bumped against or was a little disappointed by, like it just, it, this, the story really got me. I think Jamie Foxx was wonderful um, as, as Joe. And I really just, um, I was on for the ride. I was continually like shocked. I was like, okay, the story kept me going. I was like, oh, I didn't expect that. Or that was a really nice callback that was a really nice setup that was a really nice payoff or i can see where things are going and like the story really you know it was just you know to put it plainly i was just very entertained watching soul and i really got a lot from it and this is a movie that i think i'll definitely revisit you know yeah. time and time again to just continually unpack and to think about and i think this is one of those that we're going to you know revisit a lot 
um, in conversations like, man, remember how good Soul was? And I truly think that um, when Oscar's time comes around, because I believe it, it, it would have been eligible. I think it was under the cutoff. Um, I wouldn't be surprised um, if I, I think it will definitely be nominated for Best Original Screenplay. I wouldn't be surprised if Soul won Best Original Screenplay at the Academy Awards. Truly, I wouldn't. I think surely it will win um, Best Animated Movie. I would even not be surprised if Soul is nominated for Best Picture overall at the Oscars. Truly, um, it was I, it was that to me it was that good. Um, yeah, and, and I think the the one thing you said um, I think really hit at the point I was trying to make earlier that even even if there were things I didn't like, I didn't want to get off the ride, and I, and it's it's almost it's almost even more, I don't want to say it's more impressive than making a perfect movie, but, but the fact that the story was strong enough that we were still invested in it, despite the parts that we didn't like, I, you know, I think does, does, you know, really say something about the strength of soul. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's one of those, it's one of those rare movies that, you know, it, as you said, it, it's, even more admirable for the fact that it has those faults that we can like discuss and dissect and keep coming back to. Um, any any closing thoughts? I know we both liked uh, Mike Drucker's uh, tweet, which we'll paraphrase here by saying that Soul taught me that it's okay to not always be a success in the things I love. And my reaction to it was that I will never make a movie as good as Soul and I am a failure. <laughs> You know what? I I think that's the perfect ending now, right there. <laughs> All right, Willie. Well, um, thank you um, for jumping on, and thank you for again recommending. You're I was already gonna watch Soul, but you pushed me to do it even sooner than uh, I I had planned. But that was our first edition of Lamplight. We both love Pixar. You were just there. I am obscenely jealous of that. We'll be back talking more Pixar um, with all the Disney plus stuff going on and as they keep doing movies and it, Hey, if, if a soul does get some Oscar nominations, maybe we'll even do a, a revisit of soul and talk about what all of that means. So Willie, thank you for joining me tonight. Absolutely. Thanks for hosting. All right. I'll see you later, Willie.